Hello and welcome to Chairside Live. I'm your host, Megan Strong, and we're so glad you're here today. And I'm excited about this show because it's a good one. Dr. Chi is bringing the case of the week with a Bruxer crown that he's placing on tooth number 19. He's using the three-shape TRIO scanner and sending that digital impression to the lab for a reliable, consistent restoration. Let's see how he gets the job done in this exciting digital dentistry case. This patient presents with an endodontically treated tooth on number 19 that has been restored with a PFM. He stated that he really isn't very pleased with the aesthetics of it, so he requested a more natural restoration. So we are gonna replace the PFM with a Bruxer crown. It appears some of the veneered feldspathic porcelain has chipped away along the buckle margin, exposing some of the opaque layer beneath. We begin the removal of the old PFM by carefully cutting through the entire restoration until we reach the tooth structure beneath. Using a 557 carbide, I connect my depth cuts along the buckle and occlusal surface, ensuring I've cut entirely through the crown's metal substructure. The crown can then be removed with a crown removal tool using a gentle twisting action. Once the crown is removed, I then begin refining the prep. I typically start off on the occlusal surface with a coarse football diamond burr. Some of the previous looting cement beneath the old PFM is still on the tooth. Sufficient occlusal reduction of one and a half to two millimeters is going to allow for adequate material thickness of the new restoration, as well as to create space for proper natural inclines on the occlusal table. If you've ever received crowns lacking occlusal anatomy with a flat appearance, it's most likely due to an in inadequate reduction in the center of the prep. To verify we have enough clearance between the prep and opposing, we insert a one and a half millimeter thick clearance tab and have the patient bite down. If the tab pulls freely without much force, adequate clearance has been achieved. Articulating paper dye can be rubbed on the clearance tab to mark where additional reduction may be necessary. Once the occlusal is completed, I begin refining the axial surfaces with a round-ended tapered diamond. The patient also expressed displeasure in how the buckle finish line was visible on the previous crown. So I moved the new margin position a bit more apically after the placement of the first cord, which in this case I used a triple zero. The first cord helps to displace the tissue more apically while also aiding in moisture control. A size two cord is placed after the margins have been finished to help move the soft tissue laterally away from the prep. This larger second cord is really important to ensure that we create a space between the hard and soft tissue to allow for proper margin identification. The patient bites on a copper cap for at least five minutes to ensure the cord stays in place and also aids in hemostasis. For the impression, we will capture the site digitally with the three shaped TRIOS 3 scanner. Here you can see how quickly the system acquires the preparation field. Once I'm positioned over the teeth, I press the button that's located on the handle of the camera to begin operation. I start with the occlusal scans to lay the foundation for our digital model. Once I reach the distal neighbor number 18, I begin rotating the camera to the buckle, move toward the mesial, and then roll over the occlusal to the lingual and finish with this area. Because the system scans very accurately in color, it's easy to determine what areas are missing as there are distinct holes on the model that is generating on the screen. From the occlusal, a slight tilt to the mesial and to the distal fills in the missing areas on the contact surfaces of the adjacent teeth. As with all other digital impression systems, there are usually three sets of scans that the system needs. After the prep, the opposing quadrant is scanned in, ensuring that all of the occlusal, buccal, and lingual areas are scanned that are opposite the prep site. The third set is acquired with the patient biting fully and centric and taken from the buccal. Once the software recognizes similarities between the previous two scans and the bite, it will automatically stitch all the pieces together. 
A helpful feature in the byte view is having the ability to check the exact clearance between the prep and the opposing. I highly recommend reducing more now if you need to, if possible, prior to submitting the case to the lab. Over the last few years, we've seen a steady increase in the number of digital impressions getting sent to the lab, which means many more dentists are trusting and embracing the accuracy that this new technology offers. When sending digital files to the lab, one of the many skilled technicians in our CDOP department, which stands for Central Digital Order Processing, will evaluate and prepare the scanned data before it is sent into the production workflow. Once the data enters our CloudPoint design software, a technician places the margins and the library design is custom positioned to ensure the proper form and function is achieved for each patient's needs. Here the technician is moving the design to fit the proper functional position with the opposing and also aligning it according to the placement and alignment of the adjacent teeth. The software then establishes the heaviness of the contacts and we can see exactly what level we need to raise or reduce those areas and also adjusting the proximal contacts to ensure that it will fit properly within the patient's mouth. Any specific adjustments are also achieved where we can move certain areas to increase contours, reduce spots, uh, change the marginal ridge position, and really just ensuring that the final result meets the form, function, and aesthetic needs for this patient. As soon as the digital design is completed, the file is transferred to one of our many Bruxer milling machines where the restoration is precisely milled in a green state. Using a high speed and a rubber polishing wheel, a technician carefully removes and blends in the crown sprue attachments from the block to ensure all that remains is the proper final contour. Once that's completed, Special coloring dyes are then applied to specific areas of the restoration that will absorb during the six hour centering cycle. The technician places the colors according to the shade that was prescribed and also to add depth and translucent areas to the restoration. Once fully centered, the crown then receives an additional glaze application and is fired once more to allow the glaze paste to fully fuse to the restoration. After the glaze cycle, the restoration is now completed, and as you can see, we have a beautiful restoration uh, that is then finished and placed into the Bruxer box and is delivered to us within a shortened period of time. Once the Bruxer crown is received, we can then try in the crown on the patient's prep. Uh, we can first check to see the proximal contacts with floss to see if any of those areas need to be adjusted. Uh, but then in this case, sending it digitally, there was a shortened turnaround time, so any adjustments that are necessary are usually very minimal to none. When the contacts are verified, I will check the margins with an explorer to ensure that it's well sealed. And I do see an enhanced aesthetic appearance on this new restoration, so I'm sure the patient will be happy. For cementing this restoration, we're using the 3M Reliax Looting Plus, which is a resin-modified glass ionomer. And after about a couple of minutes in place, we can begin cleaning off the excess cement. It gels fairly quickly within the two minutes. And using an explorer, I gently tease the excess off and then with floss, cleaning out the interproximal areas. Once the restoration has been cemented, we will then check the occlusion and make any necessary adjustments to those areas. We'll check it with articulating paper, have the patient bite down and centric, and also in excursive movements and make any adjustments as needed. Once the adjustments are completed, I'll polish the adjusted areas using the special Bruxer polishing wheels. Here is the completed restoration. We were able to complete this crown by sending our digital impression Taken with the Three Shape Trios 3 scanner to the lab, allowing them to fabricate the patient's Bruxer crown using an entirely digital workflow. We're pleased to provide this patient with a great functional crown and also satisfying his request for a much improved aesthetic appearance. Thank you all for tuning in. Back to you, Megan. Thank you for that, Dr. Chi, and thank you for watching. On behalf of everyone here at Glywell Laboratories, we appreciate your viewership and I'll meet you right back here next time.